Hello, and welcome back to episode 28 of Breath of the Wild. I'm Vic. Well, hi there. I'm here with Tyson, and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. And we are on our way to go meet some birds, but I'm going to trim some grass along the way. Yeah, you're going to get the pharaohs. I did give up a couple of fairies on my way over here. Yeah, you got a... You got a little exploded. Aw, they have a pet. And some food for him. Yeah, frogs love wheat. Frog. I mean, whatever. Then, then they need another frog. They, they cannibalize. You know, we were talking a while back about uh, stuff that we want to see in Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Cannibalism? I want... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be an interesting twist. I was thinking magic. Magic. Oh, because of the magic meter. Mm -hmm. In uh, in like um, Link to the Past and or, and uh, and Ocarina all of the Time, games, I guess. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because in this game you just get some cool things that have cooldown timers. Yeah. But you can only use them like once. <laughs> Whoa, bro, you okay? Jeez. Oh, he got you that time. Yeah, he did. That's okay. Give you some chillfin trout, though. Where is he? Cold tuna. Cold tuna. There he is. There he is. Little turd. Nope. You gotta go fast. You gotta go fast. Don't worry. I remember how to play. Squirrel. Vomit. Oh man, they oh. all ran off. Whoa. You get meat from them? I think they drop uh, acorns or chickaloo nuts or something like that. That'd be awesome. Mini meat. I personally am of the opinion that squirrels are not worth the effort of killing if all you're going to do is eat them. Shoot. Don't tell that to the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah? Yeah. The squirrel, the, the big... national food. <laughs> For like half the state. <laughs> Did you just cut that wolf's howl off? It went... Um, <laughs> Oh, they're over there. there Maybe go. I got one. Yeah, I, I think don't think I got one. I think you. I think you. I think you oofed one of them. Maybe I just scared him. And now we're bussing. That's bussing? what the cool kids Are we bussing say. it? Yeah. Yeah, we're bussing it. Wait, you know uh, about that? Dude, you think I wouldn't know about the bus it challenge? <laughs> I just heard that the other day, and I was like, "That's dumb." <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess because of my photography stuff, I'm I'm more active on uh, Instagram and stuff. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I probably see those things. Whereas before you I do. don't even have a snap face. Yeah. I actually do have a Snapchat. I've never used it for anything. Insta Snapchat face. <laughs> I have a browser plugin that rewrites certain words. And uh, a while back, I turned Facebook into Faceboot, and it's my Face favorite boot? thing. Boot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the Orwell quote from 1984, um, if you want to imagine the future, think of a boot stamping on a human face forever. Oh, that's dark. Yeah. That's pretty dark. Well, that, yeah. that is uh, the party's idea of what the future ought to be. Yeah, that's uh, that's where we're headed. Yep. Good old social media helping us get there faster. Fine, everything will be fast. Hopefully, the the ending of the boot stomping on the face will also end quicker. Yeah. So this is something that I've thought about for a while. Um. 
And it's a good thing that we don't have an audience because I don't think that this would go over well if we did. No. Um, but, you don't know, I've been... Don't suppress your thoughts. What's that? Don't suppress those thoughts. Uh, T-H-O-U-G-H-T or T-H-O-T? Because one of those Either. things deserves more suppression than the other. Um, and there's another thing that wouldn't go over well with an audience if we had one. Uh, so, you know, lots of people have been talking about the fall of the Republic. And, and whether we're experiencing it. And oh, the, okay, thing, gotcha. the thing that I've been wondering for a while now is where the hell is the shrine that goes with this stable? It's gone. Um, maybe I maybe it's, it's just the one in Rideau Town. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but anyway, the thing that I've been wondering is like um, sort of along the lines of uh, the premise of Foundation and Empire. Have you read that? Uh, Fountainhead or Foundation and Empire? Foundation and Empire. Uh, no. Is that another George Orwell? No, that's Isaac Asimov. Oh, Asimov. Oh, no, no, no. I haven't seen that. I haven't read that. So, Foundation and Empire is this far future sci-fi. And the idea is that this okay. obscure mathematician discovers this field of statistics that he called, psych called psychohistory. Um, and basically, the idea is that although it is very hard to predict specific events um, that involve specific people, for example, um, yeah. it is a, it is much easier to predict the uh, the broad strokes of the future. And the the bigger the okay. thing you're trying to predict, the greater confidence you can have in it. Um, and so he lives in this world where there's this empire. Uh, this Earth Empire that spans like hundreds, thousands of worlds. And what he learns through psychohistory is that the Empire is going to fall. All the planets. The, well, the planets aren't going to fall, but the Empire is going to fall apart. And it's sort yeah, of going to be like... What's that? That connect them all. Right. In um, a nice and, way. And so it's going to be like the fall of Rome. And the, the states sure. that Rome subjugated are going to fall into war and anarchy. Um, we'll come back to that. So here's the Whoa. clip that you were wanting to see for the bird. Just like crashes into you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold you to look out. So I think this is the first one we've seen. Yeah, we didn't get to see the uh, lizard or the... We, we didn't go far enough south for the camel. We didn't see all old fanty pants. And we've been in the rainy area created by the elephant, but that's really it. Right. There you go. There you go. Oh, boy. This so is anyway. also the hardest Ganon. This one? Or, or no, no, no. No, this is super easy one. I'm thinking of the electric bud. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that I want to do first when we get to it. So, back in 1952. Is that your segue back into my story? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Empire, uh, which connects all these worlds and, and establishes peace and, and order and all of that stuff, it's going to fall. Um, and the galaxy is going to descend into a dark age. Um, and so he goes about trying to figure out uh, what to do about it. And the first thing that he learns is that he can't stop it. Um, and so the next thing that he goes after is, well, if I can't stop it, then what can I do to make it not so bad? Uh, what oh. can I do to make sure that the next empire rises quickly um, and that all of this important knowledge isn't lost, and so on and so forth. Hey! Okay. Um, and so that's what I'm wondering about the fall of the Republic that people say is happening right now, is is it, is it going to be a rapid fall and a, and a relatively rapid rise? Is it going to be a slow decline and a long dark age? Um, you know, what, what follows? And, and what will the subsequent world look like? Um, because my preference is that you know, democracy and freedom and all of those good things 
if we're going to have to lose them for a while, I'd like to have them back sooner rather than later. Oh. Sure. And it, it seems to me oh. that the ideal scenario is that the fall happened quickly. Because what I would like <laughs> right. is for there to be people left after the fall is concluded that remember what life was like before. Because then those are people that can strive for that to come back. Right. That makes sense. Whereas if the decline happens over a period of, say, centuries, then everybody will have forgotten what the good times were by the time the bad times have finished arriving. Very cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Rip the band-aid off. A lot better than the slow peel. Yeah. Um, I think the unfortunate thing about that is I think a fast fall is necessarily a violent one. Right. Oh, wow, there's a lot of stuff that came out of that show. What show? I mean, uh, that book. Oh, yeah. came out of it. Uh, I, I love that series. I've only read the first few of them. I haven't finished them yet. They're like five or six in total, I think. Uh, yeah. But Asmov is a fantastic writer, um, and that's a great series. Yeah, he did a few. Yeah, it looks like he did four four in that Foundation series alone, and then there's like a whole another part or something. Yeah, so the he wrote another series, uh, Robots of Dawn. Oh. And at the end of Robots of Dawn he decided to tie it into the beginning of Foundation and Empire, and so he wrote a prequel Foundation book uh, that, that tied the two of them together. Yeah. This is all back in the early 50s. I had not realized it was that long ago. Yeah, it says 1952 was Foundation, Foundation Empire. Wow. And then looks like every couple of years he came out with a new one sequel was a year later oh damn never mind his third one came out in 82 oh wow so and that, then the last one in 86 yeah good chunk of time in between I wonder what happened well he's he's a pretty prolific uh, writer so he might have just been busy with other projects sure Okay, so there's a lot going on on this one. Um, oh man, yeah, this is the one where you've got to like figure out the pattern to uh, line up so you're turning all the dang fans. Right. I broke a, a hammer on this, which I pissed me off. <laughs> uh, why didn't you just I didn't use want bombs. to waste arrows. I don't know. So I'm thinking. We gotta do this one. And that, and that can turn all of yeah. those. And then, uh, maybe we'll turn this one twice. Just make like a little box. those and then we can turn this one gonna have to go the long way around that's okay I mean using a hammer is definitely faster than waiting on the bombs to recharge but seeing as how weapons are a precious resource right Okay, this is not going to work. No? No. Turn that one. Yeah. What do you have left? See, we got one on the oh. other side of this fan. There's just two. Yep. Um, so Maybe we need like an aerial it, view. I'll do this. That's no good either. 
Yeah, so we can go up on this platform and kind of look down on it a little bit. It's not perfect. Oh, I've figured it out. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Lay it on me. So, the yeah, that one's good. You want the one in that second row to face the left. Yeah, that one. You want that facing the left. Okay. Oh, man, you gotta go a long way around. Yep. Whoa. Ooh. 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 And then you want that one next to it right up there. Keep going straight. You want that facing the left. Okay. Good. Okay, I thought I was going to hit both of them. And then you want the one to your right, that one that's... Yeah, you want that guy facing down. So you got to go the long way around again. Okay. One more. Oh. oh, no, that hurt so much. <laughs> and then you want the one in the far corner now. So just go straight down, have that guy turning back towards the left. Okay. Oh, so many long ones. Yeah. And that'll do it. Sweating. <laughs> nice. Yay. Oh, well God, I thought it didn't work. I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> 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 I was like, I thought it worked. Ah, <sighs> oh, thank goodness. Wait, where, where's the stupid secret? I got it. I got it early on. Oh, what was You're it? Still, you were you were looking up Asmob stuff. You missed it. Oh, <laughs> was it cool? I think it was an ancient core. Of course, why? <laughs> I should have guessed. I believe. Oh, we still need one more. Okay. Now. Now. You have 10 hearts? 10 hearts. Do I have 10? Yeah, I think that is 10. Oh, you need, oh, you need nine. You need nine more little spheros. Yep. We better get to it. I need a sphero. I have a, I have two spheros. What? For real? Where do you get those? Um, Why do you have those? Bought them online. Whoa, those things are awesome. I have a, I have a, an original, like, first generation sphero. And I have yeah. a uh, a BB-88 Sphero. Oh, cool! Which I bought before yeah. Episode Seven came out, so I didn't I didn't realize sure. how disappointed I was going to be. Don't worry, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, we use the Spheros when we do um, STEM outreach, like for diversity STEM recruitment stuff. Yeah, for like a like a programming and exercise kind of thing. Yeah, with the yeah. middle schoolers and like fifth graders, and it is so fun. Yeah, they're great it's for so that. So fun. I've been thinking about getting one of those uh, Amazon deep racers. Oh. I think it would be cool to use one of those as a vehicle for, for teaching. Oh, that's right. That's not the shrine I thought it was going to be. How fast does that thing go? Uh, not like crazy fast, but you know, the cool thing about them is that you, um, you, they're, they're, uh, deep learning or, uh, machine learning powered. Yeah. Can you buy these? The deep racer? Yeah. It's been like a year since I checked and they were, they were, uh, behind schedule on delivering them. Oh. Oh. Oh, they're actually discounted. Yeah, you can buy them. Nice. Like, almost 400 bucks. Yeah, I was thinking that when I looked at them, they were five, but if there's a discount, then that might account for it. Yeah, it says they're listed for 400, and now they're like, you know, 5% off or whatever. Oh, okay. Oh, but you want the sensor kit. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's almost 600 bucks, dude. Yeah. Well, so the plan is actually to get, uh, to get work to buy it for me. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah, that's an expensive toy. I was like, oh, I could get that for the family and we'd have so much fun. Well, never mind. Yeah, um, <laughs> your kids are, are not, not ready for that just yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is awesome. Watch me drive it down the stairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like surprised Pikachu face. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, speaking of surprise Pikachu face, how surprised was I when I saw that Lego came out with a Mario set? Have you seen this? I was telling you about the Mario set a while back. And it's all interactive. Yeah, it's not nicely interactive, but it's a start. Yeah. It's definitely not for kids that are uh, hyperkinetic. <laughs> but if your kid is like what we like to call potato children, it is awesome. But you don't have any potato children. Nope. We, we were hoping... No, sir. Yeah, well, I mean, you have always been an optimist, but um, I mean, nobody who knows you would would think that your children had any chance of being potato children. <laughs> Just come out of the womb, going. Let's go, 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 go on an adventure. That's right. The thingamajig is up and away. <laughs> oh, you see that? I picked up a total of 104 Korok seeds. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Only 800 more to go. The heavens. Oh, yeah, stun, stun it, and then... Oh. Oh, I didn't see that was a little tube. Oh, I don't get too close. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Why didn't it go boom boom? I don't, I don't know. Um... You have you to put what? a square one on top? Yeah. How cool is that? All right. Get I was going to say, a certain someone on Mario Maker would have uh, taken him like two episodes for this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So now, now. so now you got to launch yourself through. Yeah. Right? I wonder if this one's going to hurt us. Man, I hope so. Here we go. Yeet. Oh, no. You're good. Get a quick little recon. Ah, oh, damn it. There it is. The one direction you didn't face. <laughs> of course. All right. It was to the right, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I... <laughs> <laughs> this always gets me when people say right. I've been real careful about that. Uh -huh. Getting ankle surgery. <laughs> and and my, my surgeon's this like complete joker. Which I also which completely stresses me out. Uh-huh. He's like he's like, Yeah, we haven't had a successful one of these yet. Maybe we'll be the first. <laughs> like, like as I'm going under. As I'm going under. And so it's my left ankle that he's going to be cutting on. Uh huh. And he he scribbles on my foot. And he says, left. And he is like, is this right? And I was like, N no. It's my <laughs> left. He's like, oh, it's your left, right? And I was like, and he's like, got this half smile. I'm just like, he totally knows he's fucking with you, too. Don't, don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. Uh, do you remember uh, that we had a, a dog a while back that bit my mom's face? Yes. So so the yes. dog chomped her, and she's yeah. got she's got puncture wounds on both sides of her nose, right? Damn. So she goes to I can't remember if she wound up in urgent care or uh, or the emergency room, but okay. you know one of those is a place that she wound Ooh. up, and. Um, so she's in there and they're they're cleaning the wounds and they're and they're they're all the way through. 
So the the wounds penetrate to the the interior of her nostrils. Whoa. Um, and so they've that got wasn't a, a nip. That was a full on bite. Yeah. No. He he snapped her good. Um, wow. Yeah. Go back to the Jaboy Shrine. Um, yep. So they've got this long ass cotton swab, and it's all covered in antiseptic or whatever, and they've they've got it stuck up her nose so that they can swipe it around on the inside. Yeah. And she goes, "You can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose." <laughs> and the doctor's like, "Stop! Don't don't make me laugh right now." He's like, we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty hardcore. Jeez. What happened after that? Uh, well, they put the dog down. <gasps> really? Well, I mean, what do you do with a dog that's that's bitten somebody on the face yeah you know, no like... I mean yeah that's right wow um dang what was the what was the lead up to that like why so um that dog was an English Springer Spaniel oh, okay. and uh Springers especially the purebred ones are occasionally prone to this um apparently it's one of those overbreeding kind of disorders Mm-hmm. And it's called Springer Rage. Is um, it the brain, the brain growing thing? I I don't I don't remember. Um, but it came it came completely out of nowhere. Um, yeah, you know, my family is one That's of. That's what those. happens with pit bulls. Yeah. Um, so my family is one of those where your dog is a part of your family. You know, the dog doesn't oh, stay yeah. outside. The dog doesn't stay in a crate. Uh, the dog yep. stays in bed with my parents um yep. and and so they were they were going to bed one night and uh and the dog was like curled up against my mom and she leaned over him to turn out her reading light and he just snapped her right in the face no no warning nothing Damn. yeah Damn. so they always kind of suspected that it was springer rage because it was it was totally out of character for the dog um and it was totally without warning right um, mm. But you know, it's it's one of those things like how do you how do you confirm or disprove that hypothesis? You don't. Yeah, you just you just wait for the next you know incident. Yeah. And no well, one wants to do that. And and in that case, they they didn't. And they were just like, no. well, this one's broken. Right. Yeah, that's what happens with pit bulls. So they're so inbred because everyone loves them. For all the wrong reasons, uh, they actually are smaller than normal uh, if you get an inbred one, but their brains grow the norm to the normal size, and so your your skull is hardened, and then your brain keeps growing, and more often than not, they just like lose it. So it's like intracranial pressure. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they just I mean they just like pit bull rage. And they just go wild. And so that's why you'll hear these stories of like, we love our pit bull, our children play with it. And then one day it just went crazy and like attacked the whole family. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, and those are, those are mighty dogs. That's the thing, right? Is like, I've met several pit bulls in my life and all of them have been very sweet, friendly dogs. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, big time. But they are they're bred for fighting and they're and, and they, they are, they're strong. They're beefy. Yeah. yeah. Um and so when they go bad, they can do a lot of damage. Um and it sucks that it happens because they are they're they are wonderful animals when they're good dogs. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'll stick to the mutts. That's what that's what we'll get. Our next dog on the docket is no breed. <laughs> Give me the ugliest, goofiest looking mongrel that's in the pound. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Well, and hopefully one that's a little bigger so you don't have to worry about killing it if you roll over on it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That, that is a big weapon. That's a dragon bone, isn't it? Yep. Yeah! Ooh, wow! Eat it! Wow! <laughs> Uh, it's so satisfying nice. when you get those. Because that could have could have gone poorly. <laughs> yeah, you need that. Those are such good weapons for just hucking around. Yeah, I guess I don't need this. Oh no, the Royal Guard Spear is awesome. Eight full blade is kind of dumb. Yeah. They're they're fragile and they're not. What that was in strong. that treasure chest? Was there anything good in it? Oh, I I forgot. Yeah. Oh, I opened it. No, you I, opened it. I opened it and immediately forgot what was in there. Yeah, I think maybe it was nothing. This chest is empty. <laughs> well, that was an easy tower. Look at that. Yeah. Lake tower. Oh, this is where you can camp out and get the uh, the other dragon. Um, The one that we have to rescue first, or is this the shocky dragon? Uh, you know, I can't. I couldn't tell you. Probably is a shock, the electric one. Yeah. There's Nariu, Drenal, and the other one. <laughs> well, their names are based on uh, Din, Ferrore, and uh, oh, Nehru. Nehru. Is the Nehru dragon just called Nehru? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, but the don't region is called either. La Nehru. Oh, Mount Laneru, yeah. So maybe it's the Laneru dragon. I don't yeah. know. We'll, we'll find out in one of these episodes. Uh, the Episode elected... two hundred and thirteen. <laughs> the the elected Call dragon it. is Farash. Ah, oh, Farash. There you go. Nice. Dinral Farash and yeah, and something something Naru. Yeah. Man, you got this one good. Moving nice. and a grooving and a grooving and a moving, etc. Well, you know what time it is. Really? Already? Yeah. That we don't play fast. around. Actually, we, we only play around, but. Yeah, yeah. that is exclusive of what we do on this channel. Pretty good. All right, well, that was a, that was a nice little episode. Thing. Hell yeah. I like it when we accomplish things. I also like it when we accomplish things. I, uh, that gives I me the good the good brain juice. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I recorded an episode of Control last night, and uh, I wound up converting a couple of sections to fast forward because it was just like me doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, no. And I, I decided that I didn't really want to just have that be the whole episode. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for episode 28 of Breath of the Wild. Come see us again for episode 29 and more shrines and more towers, and I think we're due for a heart. Hell yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>